Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Podcast, y'all. I am your host, Jojo. And I'm Tyra. Ooh. Ooh, happy Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Whenever you're listening <laughs> to this. Whenever I started thinking listening. about what today was too. And I'm like, damn, what is today? Because mm-hmm. by the time y'all see this, it's Monday. Mm-hmm. Or like you're supposed to see it on Monday. I don't know. Don't care. But <laughs> hey. Ooh, I feel like I didn't say ooh in the last episode. I don't know. Um, did you? I did. I did, but it was like mad chill. Oh, okay. It wasn't on like gassed up. Oh, okay. That episode coming back was like our first episode ever. Not our first episode ever. Nah, the first episode was tragic. Like, like the first episode we've ever done, tragic. And Actually, people listen to that one the most because that's like number one. But like, oh, I cringe. I love going back and seeing our first couple episodes. Really? I think they're like so cute. I mean, it was tragic. Don't get it fucked up. It was, there were complications. We yeah. we barely knew, like knew anything. Remember the first time we recorded and then we didn't post it actually. It was a, we had started recording and we had two different mics at the time or we had one at the time. I don't know. We were we were taste testing basically. Yeah, it was terrible. And it was just not going well. We were like, yeah, we're gonna do this for real, for real. Yeah. And then we came up with our first episode. But when I look at those, I'm like, oh, look how skinny I was. Look how like <laughs> young we were. Not that we're old, but that's like two two years now. Right. We were in our our you know first, first apartment, apartment at the uh-huh. time, and we had like a cute little setup, and we were like in the corner of that apartment, so. You were, we were on different chairs. Yeah. It was rusty. Completely dusty. different chairs. But I fucked with it. It was, you know, we work with what we got. And that's mm-hmm. the only, that's all we could do. So right. I look back and I just, I think it's just so cute. And then I'm just like the progress. Uh-huh. A lot of progress. I mean, there's always progress to be made. But uh-huh. We've come a long way. It's an experience. That part. But don't worry, y'all. We're going to get it right. But um, a few things, a few things, right? So... This is season three, technically. Mm-hmm, we didn't mm-hmm. even mention that in the last episode because, you know, we I was getting used to what this is, recording. Season three, which means year three of recording the podcast. Um, and we always try to do, like, new things or, like, try to, like, change things up. One new thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start allowing, um, like, audio recordings, like, audio questions or stories that you guys may have. Um, we're still working out how we're going to do it, but most likely we're going to put the description, um, in this video as well as like the link in our, um, bio and things like that. But yeah, like now you guys can send us voice notes, which is going to be cool because I want to hear your voice. And sometimes it's just better because I, we can't read. Yeah, we We can't can't read read your shit. And like, I need the, I need the expressions that come with these because- You know, people people have their own style and things like that. And sometimes we're reading it and it's like in our style. I don't know. Yeah. But it's something new that we want to try. We hope that you guys send us some voice notes. We want to hear the drama or just anything, honestly. Any stories that you guys may have. And it'll definitely give us some clarity because sometimes I feel like we be reading some of the family meeting questions. And like she said, not only are we reading it in our style, which I'm sure I give a lot of those stories a little juice. Mm-hmm. I give it a little hype. But I feel like sometimes we just don't be understanding it or we just don't understand it. I forget what the other part was, but um, but yeah, it would just be very clarifying to hear some voice notes for specific questions and stories. And it mm-hmm. gets right to the chase. All right. So there's going to be a limit to it, though, but you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. We're working out the kinks. Um, We're still going to allow like family meeting, family meeting submissions, because I know some people just don't want to put themselves out there. Um, So that's always going to keep on going. Um, But yeah, I have a hat on that says tragic. Mm -hmm. Cute. Very cute. Mm -hmm. My color, baby. Mm -hmm. Um. How was everybody's Valentine? I hope you had a great love day. Um, some of us had to work. Mm-hmm. Um, but nonetheless, we had a good time. We went to dinner. Things that happen on a weekday, we usually like celebrate before because sometimes right. like to do things on a weekday, especially with me 
with us being on opposite shifts too, it's almost impossible. So, um, we actually celebrated some of it on Sunday. We went to dinner in where? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And then we did a pottery class, mm -hmm. which was actually rough. It, is it was cool though. Way harder than it looks, but it's not like, I don't know, it's not that hard, but at the same time, like your shit could get really messed up if you like completely just destroy it and it could like just fall apart which happened to me and she ended up giving me like another clay but like you can't use like too much water and like you can't turn it too fast or too slow or like there's you... hella science to it yeah there is and we made like i made a cup like a little mug and you made two other things right well you made uh, a, she made I'm, an ashtray i'm still very unsure of what it is <laughs> It could be ashtray. It could be just a, a candle pot. I don't know. It's It could be whatever it identifies as. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But I did it. And it was cool. Um, like I said, there's a science behind it. And boy, so I don't know. Maybe it's me. But mm -hmm. do you ever like see people do it and you're like, damn, like something about that is kind of sexy. I mean, yeah, like, I think the whole thing just looks cool. Yeah. Like, I, like the whole thing, obviously, just, it's, like, very, like, um, satisfying. for yeah, me. Yeah, and, like, very satisfying. Like, it, it could hypnotize you, for sure. Yeah. And the girl that we had, she was, like, very so soft-spoken, and she had, like, meditation music in the background. So it was a little vibe, and it was a very small class. Mm -hmm. So it was only, what, six of us? So yeah. I feel like she really had your attention. And it wasn't as expensive as like other classes that I've seen. But yeah, definitely recommend. Very, very fun. And just like a good, like a good first time for both of us because we've never done it. Yeah. So that was cool. And then the actual day, we just spent a couple hours together because again, she had work during the day. I work at night. Um, so we did a little takeout and yeah, and I some sweets. And I was fine with that. Yeah, that's like I feel like going out. On Valentine's Day, it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, shout out to the people who do it, but it's like ugh, you gotta get ready after well, after work. After work, you gotta get ready. Then you gotta travel, and like it's fucking cold over here. The traffic during that time, everyone's out. You need reservations. If you don't have reservations, it's then it's flop. like yeah, like you gotta plan in advance. Yeah. Um. So we were like, ugh, like we'd rather just order food and just like watch a movie at home which is what we did oh my god we saw the movie what was the movie called our our son our son and it was about this gay couple two men who um had a baby and they were going through like a divorce you have to pay for it though but it's a gay movie so nothing in this life is for free mm -mm. um i don't know about you but i'm okay with not celebrating valentine after this I think we have enough holidays in the year, especially towards the end of the year. Towards the end of the year, I feel like we get slammed because it's our birthdays, it's family's birthdays, it's yeah. holidays. So, like, so much happens within those last couple months of the year, all types of vacations, parties, gatherings, and stuff. I feel like that's enough. Like, you spend so much money in the last six months that, yeah. that as soon as January uh -huh. hit, I'm like, oh, I could breathe. And yeah. then, boom, Valentine's yeah. here. And I'm like, oh. That's capitalism, she though. She knows I love her on a regular day. They so. want us to spend our money. Yeah. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ. And of course we do. Of course we fall into it. Well, I'm done falling into it. This is our last Valentine's Day. Uh, you know, you want to get me balloons and a flower for the day? That's fine. That's cute. But all this extra celebrating, <laughs> you know, we can pick and choose. We can yeah. pick and choose. I do have one one thing planned. We're supposed to have a spa day. Mm -hmm. this weekend or something that was supposed to be part of our valentine's day gift so um that's it yeah but to all you guys who you know love that little thing do what you do not boo -boo. that little thing yeah nah but on some real shit the real tea that i want to talk about can we talk about carol g carol g go carol uh, uh. first of all we all knew that that little teaser that she gave her y'all are funny mm -hmm. like people were analyzing the fuck out of that um 
that Other preview than, yeah. immediately knew that I was young Miko. Mm -hmm. Immediately. And I'll tell you, the community blew up, baby. I know everybody was sitting at their phone or on a TV at 6.50, maybe even earlier, to wait for that per that video to premiere. Jojo was literally counting down the minutes. I was so gassed. Like, I thought I was slick. No, she thought it was New Year's. Like, she was like, oh my God, three more minutes, three more minutes. <laughs> no, and I'm really like, three didn't. more minutes for what? And she's like, for that video to come out. So for those that don't know, like, Carol G came out with a new song called Contigo. And in her music video, it's young Miko. And they're, like, in the shower together. And it's very, like, oh, it's giving lesbian. And... Even though Young Miko isn't in the song, she's still in the music video. So it was kind of like a preview to that. Then the video came out at 7 p.m. When I tell you that I thought that, okay, like, people just love to hate. Mm. Like, you're going to have a hater no matter what. Like, I love Carol G. And I'm like, who could hate on her? People could definitely hate on her. If you go to the comments... Because, you know, I love to read the comments. Um, whatever. I'm not even going to go through them because, like, there's a, there's some negative ones. But, like, some people were like, oh, why are you promoting this? Why are you encouraging lesbianism? Blah, 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 blah. In the video, they didn't even kiss. Mm -hmm. It's a really cute video. Yeah. Like, they're in the shower at one point. That was, that was like, a two-second clip. Um, they're, like, taking pictures of each other. They're, like... Um, not in the shower, like just random scenes, like they're in their room, they're in high school, um, they're in the it's, bathroom. It's together. giving very much uh, like teenage, teenage love. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I feel like for a lot of us, you know, she done hyped us. Um, that was like our teenage dream. Mm -hmm. You know. You you make that bestie. You guys are super close. Like you have this crazy at like you create this super tight bond that you didn't even like realize that you can make with a person, and then realize like it goes further than that bond of like oh shit like I got I actually got feelings I could actually love this person, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know at least for me like that's that's the vibe it gave me that's the 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 picture that it gave me in my head, and it was just like wow like you know. To just have that with somebody and it's reciprocated, mm -hmm. that's that's love. It's nice to see sometimes, especially because I feel like, at least for me, you know, growing up in high school, you don't always get the girl that you want. You know, mm -hmm. it's hardly ever really reciprocated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, it, there's a lot of people who are usually either just playing with you or just in denial about their sexuality in that time. Mm -hmm. Um and then they just try to hide it, you know, doing that lead on thing. I don't know. I just feel like for me, it was like, it was very satisfying. And like, how do you say it when it like heals your little teenage yeah, heart? Yeah, like your, yeah, your kid. Yeah. Your inner child, your inner so child. to say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a cute video. I wish it was longer. Um, I don't know why people are so upset. Like, it's just a fucking video. I'm going to be for real. They're they probably dating. really did kiss and they just didn't show Come it. On. And and why would you do that? Because like, just show it. Who That's cares? That's like when they show it, one that that quick little lesbian couple in a show and it's just like they, they, they promote it heavily. Yeah. But then when you watch it, it was like they had five seconds of scene time. Right, right, right. Like, you know, right. they, they were just doing the kitty flirty, but mm -hmm. there was no real action. Like... Mm -hmm. How y'all promote a love story that really wasn't yeah. a love story. It was but just... like imagine if Carol G and Young Miko were to date. What what do you think about that? I think um I'm better. I'm, I'm a better here for, choice. No, I'm here I'm for a better it. selection. Oh Lord. <laughs> for who though? Like who you who do you want? Carol Whoever G or wants Young me Miko? first. Because they both look good. Miko is cute. I think Miko is cute and she got a vibe to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but Gato is just fire. Like, I probably let her ruin my life too. Oh my lord! <laughs> but they like I I looked it up because I was like, what's the age gap? Wild. And it's like somewhere it's anywhere between like eight to ten years or some shit. Yeah. Um. So it's it's quite a gap. But at the same time, I'm just like, damn. Like, 
again, that's exciting, that inner child. Like, you know, everybody wants somebody a little bit older than them. So I'm sure for Miko, it's like, you know. Oh, I know she was but shaking. it was giving grooming at the same time. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I did. A little. I don't know. They cute. I think it would be cool, but in the same breath, it'd be... That's like a... The, the picture I have in my head is like Michelle Rodriguez and, and Zac Efron. Like, that's such a age gap. It's like weird. It's Did like they two date? different generations. Did they date? Yeah, I think at some point. Oh, you know, I'm not with the I times. was super mad at that. Or like Cara Delevingne and Michelle Rodriguez. Mm. Maybe I should have gave that example first, but whatever. Um, I don't know. I don't really care if they do. You know, I mean, like, for why me. Do, no, no, no. Why do people care? Because Beyonce and Jay-Z have the wildest age gap. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Now I need to look it up. Um, <laughs> I think for me, I love like... I don't know how to say it, but if they were to really be together, I think that'd be fire because it just goes to show like. Beyonce and Jay-Z I have a 12 year age gap. Probably. That's a crazy comparison, but I just had to say it. I mean, if I if I really knew the age gap between Aaliyah and, and R. Kelly when they got no, no, together. No, no, no. Let's not even talk about that. That's wild. No, no. That guy I'm is, just saying. canceled. Anyway. In jail. <laughs> um, wild. Yeah. I'm here for it. People were super mad. Like, uh, I think for our community, it was, like, exciting. And it was just, again, like, you just painted this picture for us that, like, hyped our inner child. But um, some people were just not happy. And they were so gassed. Like, where's Fed? Where's Fed? I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Don't really care. But, oh, where's he at? He should be in this video. Da, 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 da. Didn't they break up? I don't know. I didn't even know that they were really together. There's, it's always speculation, that. like heavily speculation. I just hate, I just feel like, okay, like at the end of the day, celebrities are people are too. human. Like they're allowed to date people and break up with people and date people and break up with people. Like if that's what they do, that's what they do. Like Period. they don't have to marry every person that they date. And then I hate, I hate that. And they be in the comments, like talking about the person's ex and shit like that. Like, <laughs> That's weird. And, like, I see it even with, like, couples on the internet. Like, people just can't get over that, that like, person's ex for some mm -hmm. reason and always bring it up in the comments. People just be invested. OD, invested. Mm -hmm. um, oh, no, I loved it. Um, obviously, I wanted more from it, but I take what I can get. Right. Quickie question. Do you have a quickie? I don't have a quickie oh question. Oh, my Lord. I don't. This is going to be the second episode that we don't have a quickie question because... We're unprepared. Yeah. I don't Simple. know what to tell you. It's probably... Honestly, our cards are probably still packed away no, in no, no. these boxes. <laughs> let's there's be somewhere real. over there. We got shit that... We have a good majority of everything unpacked, but there's still some missing pieces, so... It'd be like that. All right. But nah, um, so today's topic, we wanted to talk about chosen family. I know that I don't think that we had an entire episode about this. Mm -hmm. Um, we did mention it a few episodes ago. I think in our holiday episode, we had mentioned like how to get through holidays without family, or like if you don't really celebrate holidays, like the best way is having a chosen family. So I guess I kind of wanted to get a little bit more in depth of you know, what is a chosen family? Why it is actually important, especially to our community. I mean, anybody can have a chosen family. Um, I feel like they're not, I mean, within the community, the numbers are high. I don't know it exactly, but you know, a lot of people go through not being accepted in their family. Um, so they experience like that distance or getting kicked out of their families even. Um, but even just normal families or, you know, they don't get along. There's a lot of things that, you know, separate people or I don't know. It's just a lot. All right. So what is chosen family? According to charliehealth.com experts in the field have defined chosen families as non-biological kinship bonds, I don't know if I said that right, mm -hmm. whether legally recognized or not, deliberately chosen for the purpose of mutual support and love. Basically, these are the people who understand you, lift you up, celebrate you, help you, and love you, even without biological ties. On the flip side, you're you're there for them too. I love that. The, the whole like 
mutual mutual support and love like the word mutual Mm -hmm. i feel like there'd be some friends and i say that in quotations that low-key be hating like Mm -hmm. low-key aren't supportive friends like always have a negative comment to say and i want to say there's a difference between being negative and then like being like the realist who's just like who tells you like the deal like i guess like gives you the pros um and the cons Mm -hmm. and i'm i'm that friend as well like i always keep it real with my friends like i'm not gonna sugarcoat things with you but at the same time i do support them as well like whenever there's an accomplishment or whenever they text me about something it's like a celebration and like we like to get each other gifts and things like that um so i think that that like that's important to find and i mean it is hard to find but it's essential yeah i think for me like with my little chosen family outside my family um you know i am lucky enough as i said before to have a family that is fairly accepting at least my immediate family like the people that matter support me love me regardless what I do, who I am, um, you know, it doesn't mean you can't still have a chosen family outside your family. Mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like with my, with my outside chosen family, shout out to Fig, (laughs) Naya, Jasmine, Twin, damn, who am I forgetting? Lily? My, my main man, my main, that's my seed right there, Lily. Um, you know, if I forgot, I'm sorry. I love you, Kayla. Remembered. Anyway, all of them, you know, we all get older. We change a little bit. Sometimes it's hard for us to, you know, be back in a place you where you we're good. Brandy. You forgot Brandy. Oh, Big Daddy Brandy. I, Ugh, I miss her. Let me stop. I miss all my bitches. <laughs> but I feel like... um. Damn, you made me lose my. I'm sorry, I just had to say it before I forgot to. Um, I feel like they they show love, support me, and accept me in so many ways, and that's important to me because. Not to bring it up, but I'm gonna bring it up. In my first relationship, I didn't really have that. I didn't have. You didn't have friends. I didn't know. I didn't have like this boatload of friends. I had like a very few, and the person that I was with at the time was like real quick to be like I don't like them and be like super negative like every person that I kind of had was like became a problem for them they were like oh I don't like them they not shit they be disrespectful oh that person like you that's your new bitch like it was always some crazy stuff oh my god I hate I hate an insecure girl yeah so so it being my first relationship I really didn't know how to navigate through that so I kind of isolated myself and then in isolating myself I I feel like I didn't get to be my authentic self because in my head, I was like, this person already knows me like this. So I should stay like this. So like if I tried anything different or like wanted to try something, they'd be quick to be like, you don't do that. Why are you doing that? Since when do you do that? Like, so I kind of just like stuck to just being the person that I was in that time. And then after like we broke up, I did everything that I didn't do that I was like, mate, I don't, I never did it because I didn't know if I would even do it. Like mm-hmm. you had a problem with everything. Like, so when I finally did, I was like, all right, I know I don't like that or, Hey, I like that. So, but I think in that, that journey of like, um, experiencing things, I made those friendships, you know, and those mm-hmm. bonds. And it was like, I don't know. That meant that meant a lot to me because then it was like I no longer felt like I needed to put myself in a box mm-hmm. and like be this person for somebody else that like I yeah. just felt accepted. I could be however ratchet I wanted to be, however wild, crazy. Yeah. I wanted to be like it didn't matter. I feel like if your partner is trying to get you to like if they're making you distance yourself from like your friends or your family that's like a red flag obviously there's like i guess there's special circumstances where you do actually have a shitty friend or a shitty family member and they're telling you like oh that's fucked up like i don't really like them or whatever the case is but i feel like if your partner with every with every friend they have a problem with then it's like all right something's up like not every friend 
is against me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's something that you got to watch out for. And like in my first relationship, when I was dating that guy in college, like it was the same thing. Like he had an issue with people, like issue with my roommates, issue with my friends. And like he didn't really know my friends from home, so he couldn't really have an issue with them. But it was like, oh, and like also the, oh, you go home too much. Like you're always with your family. Like that was, that was a problem for him. And I'm like, I invite you to come to be with my family too. It's like, I'm not just leaving all the time. And we're together literally every single day, other than the weekend when I would go home. And I was like, I can't. Like, now you now you tripping. Yeah, that's the one <laughs> You got a comment about my family. Now you tripping. Like, I can't. And my family was always so nice and kind to him all the time. Like, they would they let him sleep over, which is like, why? my parents don't do that. Especially in a Hispanic family. Yeah, that ain't happening. Obviously, it wasn't in my room. It was in the living room. But it was like for they let you sleep over my house. That's wild. Like they don't do that. So I was like, nah, you, you got some issues. Like insecurity at its finest. It's crazy. And I, and like he would think that everyone would try to get at me. Like even supervisors, he'd be like, I think that's supervisor. I'm like, are you crazy? My own supervisor? Are you serious? No. I was like, yeah, you're bugging. You're bugging. I can't. Um. So some of the benefits and some examples of many benefits of children and families. It can cheer you up when you're feeling down. You understand the unique struggles you face. They understand the unique struggles you face. You, they validate your life experiences, affirm your sexual and gender gender identity. You can call in case of an emergency. You can confide. You can confide in them. You can trust. You can share your successes with them, and you can celebrate birthdays and holidays with. Um, these are all great examples, and I feel like we can keep going on and on and on and on and on about it. Um, you still need, like, people in your life who you can talk to and, like, talk about what what we face with on a daily basis. Because I feel like, all right, so before I came out, I had this friend group, and um, we were, like, stuck at the hip when we were in high school and, like, a little bit after that when we went to college and then obviously the relationship died after that but like part of the reason why why I feel like it died is because we didn't under, understand each other like it was like I'm talking to you about this person that I'm dating who's a girl and it was just hard for them to like I don't know give me advice or like really understand and there's just like so many terms also in the LGBTQ world that it could just get confusing, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like we we just couldn't relate and we kind of just grew apart. And I just felt like they didn't understand what it was like for, for me because it was like, well, I'm not out. You know that because you're my best friend. But like my parents don't know that. Other people, like my coworkers don't know that. Like people people don't know that. So it was like I was living a double life and I feel like they didn't understand it. So you kind of have to find those people that do understand it, that do know where you're coming from. And I feel like most of those people can relate a little bit um, mm -hmm. to you. Maybe they're queer, maybe their sister is queer, whatever the case may be. I feel like they they have a deep connection to it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I feel like having queer friends um, is important. Like my best friend is queer and we talk like on a daily basis. Yeah, I feel like any relations or bonds that you create with people is off the strength of how you can relate um I again like my journey started off really young but prior to like getting into high school and finding you know people who I could relate to um I was solo dolo like I had again like and I was very young where it was like I was seeing things like where I imagined, you know, relations with a girl um, when I was young. And to me, it was just like, that's weird. Like, why would I think about that? Why would I? And it was like, I had nobody to like really relay that to or nobody to look to that, you know, was going through that situation or that I could ask questions mm -hmm. about. Like the other day I had told, <laughs> the other day I, my uncle was here and we was talking about stuff and I had mentioned that you know, I had a family party like back when I was younger. And I remember seeing like my first ever stud 
Mm. My first ever. And at the time, they were like known as AGs or something like aggressive. I don't know. And um, super like masculine. And at the time when that person had walked in, I was like, is that a dude? And then I seen their face and their light eyes. And I was like, nah, that like their face looks super soft. And that person had a hoodie on. So I really couldn't tell, but either way, I thought they were cute. And then I saw that when their hoodie came off, they had a ponytail or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, that's a girl, but she looked fine. Like, why do I think she's so fucking cute? Like, I, I got no business. I'm 12, 13, 14. Like, why do I care what I look like right now? Like, and I had nobody to like ask or be like, yo, and my family's cool as fuck. So it's like, I could ask some shit and they just be, you know, Why like, didn't whatever. you ask your uncle? I don't know because I just didn't. Like, it was just weird to me. Mm-hmm. I was like so like, oh my God, like you would have thought the hottest dude just walked in the room the way I was like gassed. But I didn't have anybody to be like, dang, who could I ask or who like, who could I tell this to? Um, And it wasn't until like I had my first real crush mm-hmm. in... um middle school and the person like low-key was leading me on and ended up kind of like reciprocating a little bit of that energy Mm -hmm. that I was like oh yeah like this is a thing I gotta say something Mm -hmm. and I ended up like telling telling my cousin I think and then I started talking to my cousin about it and you know she's straight she didn't really understand it (laughs) she was just like you know surprised for the most part but it wasn't like a a crazy shocker where it was like oh my god like that's wrong and nothing Mm -hmm. like that it was more so like you know well if that's really how you feel like that's okay Mm -hmm. like that's gonna stay here with me it's not gonna go anywhere and it was just like I don't know it was a sense of comfort and then from there it was just I guess I made it a thing to find people like that who just comfort me and in like the person that I was becoming or the things that I was expressing to them. Like, I don't know. I think that definitely played a big part in like who I am today. And as I started more and more um, to grow, I just, I feel like I added more people like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have a lot of queer friends. Like, Mm -hmm. like Jojo has a lot of friends. Well, (laughs) Now you're up north, so they <laughs> that, just gotta that, drive that, up that. here. But you still have a lot of friends who you keep in contact with, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I need more queer friends, so it's like, what do you say to people like me who need more queer friends? And how do? Because this is the tough part about like being queer. It's like making friends with other que- other queer queer people with setting those boundaries like i'm trying to be your friend don't ever think that i'm trying to be more than that Mm -hmm. that's not the case like i i feel like i'm a very friendly person Mm -hmm. and i would never want people to think that i'm trying to like hit on them or like whatever the case is like how do people how do people make friends and keep it at that I don't know. You really just got to tell people. Uh, see, What were you going to say? Girl, I'm trying to be your friend, but don't think I'm trying to kiss you. No, facts. Like, if that's what you... Oh listen, God, I just need crazy. friends. Like, why can't the whole... I don't... First of all, if I'm telling you that I have a partner uh-huh. off the rip, that's like, I'm I'm off Girl, the table. People move crazy out I here. Know, like, people, I know. People be cheating on their partner. Their like... motives are crazy. <laughs> um, It'll be like, Dara, that girl, Jojo and Dara, yeah, her girl's trying to get at me. <laughs> you never know like i gotta wash my bag <laughs> people be crazy i know which i mean girl if that was ever happened what y'all would be ruined who what are you even talking about anyway <laughs> um nah you just gotta tell people straight up like listen i i'm solely looking for friends if you can't be a friend that's fine with me like there i'll Bitch, I got friends already. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I don't know why we have to sugarcoat anything or we got to tiptoe around people to make them feel comfortable. Like, no, if friendship is all you're looking for, then that's what you say. But I do think, like, it depends in the environments that you're in. If um, you're, like, in environments or events that are solely for, you know, relationship seeking. Like what, the club? No, the club is not a relationship environment. 
People meet people at the club. You do. And that's totally fine. And it works out for some, but it don't work out for all. That's a, I'm single. I'm ready to turn up. I'm about to do ratchet things. If I catch one tonight, I'll catch one tonight. Yeah. But no, that's not like a, oh, I'm I'm going to the club to look for a relationship. So where, like, it's just where I'm trying to have fun. Go? Where do people go? I don't even know anymore. I mean, you could find friends in the club too. Bumble BFF, I heard. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't really use apps. Um, I've always made queer friends through mutual people. I happen to like, you be surprised at how small the world really is. I make mm-hmm. friends with even straight people and then they happen to have right. gay family members or queer mm-hmm. family members. And then it's like, we vibe, like it's just a trickle effect after that. I'm, I've just known a decent amount of people and, and I would network that way. Right, right, right. Because if you think about it, like, some of those friends I made, too, weren't all going out. Most of my friends were through some mutual relation with other people. Mm -hmm. So I've been pretty good with that. Yeah. Well, whatever. We're looking for friends. So if you're in North Jersey, let us know. I'm crying that you say you're looking for queer friends. I am looking for queer friends. Honestly, I want her to have a shit ton of friends. Go. Bye. Do your thing. Because you would think, I mean, I get it. When we get older, it's a little harder making friends. It's but she hard. did not try at all in South Jersey. At mm. all. Stop playing. I'm dead ass. Stop. <laughs> at all. And I'm just like, all right, well, I mean, I can share my friends, but I, it's really not your vibe. So, <laughs> but yeah, she can have some queer friends. And now I need a new lineup. I need, I, I'll be telling her I need my my doses of gayness. <laughs> she be she needs to go outside. That's what she needs. Yeah. Lord. All right. So we wrote here where to find people to be part of your chosen family. We kind of talked about this, but like um coworkers, clubs, support groups, mentor groups, therapy groups, social events. Um, I really like the like the clubs and things like that because there's also like um we talked about it before, but like in different states they'll have like sport groups so like if you're into sports they'll do like some events and things like that and i know here in jersey they have some events sometimes for like queer people which i want to look into again um and if there's ever anything out there we like to post it like on our social media on instagram we like to put it on our story and i think when it gets warmer out they will there's going to be a lot more like events for queer people queer people to get together other than the club what was the um the app that's about to come out that shows oh. like all the queer owned businesses because i feel like mm-hmm. some of those some mm-hmm. of those businesses actually do um their own events yeah hold on i now, don't remember what it was called now i gotta look, look it up. up but someone shout out to whoever did this but someone tagged me in a comment and it was about this guy who is building a website and it's going to be for, like Jojo said, people who have owned queer businesses. And since I just became a real estate agent, they thought it was like a good um, like a good opportunity for me to like, I guess, like advertise myself on it. But the app comes out on February, Feb- February 20th and Everywhere is Queer is the um their website so i'm guessing their app is gonna be called everywhere is queer but when it comes out we will let y'all know and we will see how it works and hopefully people like register and and like that way we know like where to go other than the club right 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 that's what i'm saying like it's not just going out and clubbing and partying that you're gonna find friends i feel like for me i found most of my friends um through work you know one of my really really good friends I met her through work, even though I knew her prior to meeting her because we knew mutual people. Crazy how time works. That's why I say the world is small. Um, And then I met another, my other good friend from work, which she ended up being friends with uh, Mm -hmm. another girl that is one of my good friends now too. So I met them, you know, through each other. And then um, one is my childhood, like best friend that I grew up with. Um, another one was like a friend of the family that I grew up with. So it's like, I got a little bit of everybody from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't have to be partying. 
yeah, at all. It a lot of things for me was like in high school, I played sports. So that's mm-hmm. where I kind of made some of my friendships there too, back in that time. Not too many I, like that I transferred over to now, but. Even through social media though, like yeah. some of the people that have gone on this podcast who I consider friends, we've met because of social media. Yep. Literally, like it wasn't like we saw each other in person. It was like we f- started following each other. They liked our our content. We liked theirs. We we're like, you should come on the podcast. And yeah, like social media is your best friend, honestly. Yeah, I'm about to say that <laughs> social media holds so much weight now. Like it it's does. a completely different time from when like <laughs> I was coming up and making friends. Like now this shit does work for you. You just got to do it. Yeah. That's it. Reach out to people. If you, you know you follow people who have the same interests as you or you know it's it's never a far fetch you never know who opens up those messages especially if it's somebody with a check mark i don't that certified shit don't mean nothing yeah everybody is people um so i would take advantage of that you know people who who have the same interests as you look into people who no mutual people like you mm-hmm. you know it's all it's networking really yeah and i would say um to put yourself out there like especially with work like i know sometimes at work like they want to do like these corny events <laughs> and these like parties or like little get together or whatever like go to those like try to go to at least one or two because mm-hmm. you never know like you You'd might meet, yeah you might meet someone from like another department or mm-hmm. someone that you just click with that you thought like they were like weird but like next thing you know you guys are having like a conversation they just don't talk that much like you just never know honestly I'm not to say, i feel like with with work events sometimes some people don't like to go to it because they don't want to be too personal with people yeah, they work like, with yeah but in the same breath you gotta go like at least once or twice you know mm-hmm. if it's anytime they do an event you at least have to go once because like you said you meet people who mm-hmm aren't like that in the office but they come out in social in social environments and they're completely different person you know and that's fine i went to like my first like work event like in the summer and like i drove from south jersey was almost two hours away and i came back the same day but i I loved it like i was telling jojo they were spoiling us like they hired a personal a personal chef who cooked for us like three meals and it was so delicious like and they lived in Jersey City in this really nice, like, apartment where you could, like, see um, the view. And we were, like, just having a good time. So you just never know, honestly. All in all, pick your people. Choose the people that make you feel safe, that make you feel like you have a safe place, someone you can run to, you can relate to, you can express all your deepest, darkest secrets to. Um, that is the main focus in having your chosen family is people who affirm and validate you and who you are um with that being said it doesn't mean that you have to like hate your family because they're not accepting or like completely exile them out Mm -hmm. um because that can change your your, you know your family can change they can come around um and be a little bit more open to the person that you've become so you know, I feel like it's very hard for people to just say, forget my family. You know, ideally, you always want to be accepted and loved by the people who brought you in this world. But, um, you know, all in all, sometimes that really isn't the case. And you have to go out looking for a chosen family. But, you know, don't feel like, oh, my family isn't, you know, I mean, only, you know, and if you don't want to be a part of your family, that's perfectly fine. But I do think, like, you know, there is hope sometimes. Mm-hmm. So that's it uh, for Chosen Family. I hope that that gave you all a little bit of insight or comfort in finding your way um, in, in finding that support and love elsewhere. All right, let's get into the family meeting. First question. I am an 18-year-old female, and I'm struggling to be around my family. I came out to my second oldest sister at the age of 15, and to my surprise, she was very accepting. So slowly, I came out to the rest of my family. Not my father, though. I'm half black and half Latino. Not to be stereotypical, but when things happen in the family, we don't talk about it. We pray, and we move on. (laughs) We Very often, they will bring up the topic of LGBTQ, and say hateful things to intentionally hurt me. They're all very Christian. While my older sister 
shows me the same love and support. My mother is often annoyed by me if I read queer books or wear my rainbow wristband, lol. Trying to do me while seeking her approval. This is what I hate about like the Latino culture is like the fact that there's always like this big elephant in the room and no one no one like steps up and says something says something and has a hard conversation and like we want it to be our parents because you're the, you're the older person you're supposed you're to be the adult you're the adult you're supposed to be like you're supposed to bring some I don't know harmony into this issue and and I feel like we the kids are the ones that have to be the adults and have to like bring up these hard conversations because they refuse to have it or they refuse to apologize or they just they don't see anything wrong with it and it's like <laughs> yeah i don't i feel like a lot of things do go unspoken and it's kind of like a like for me my mom never asked me about it she's been she's been told for years um i've been outed by people to her for years and not once did she ever come up to me and ask me like yo you know you like girls or like is that your girlfriend or like do you have a boyfriend do you like boys like nothing nothing of that sort it was just very an unspoken thing even when I started dating that girl she never like the girl was around all the time (laughs) and not once did she think like she would say like slick shit but It wasn't to a full effect of like, so what's up with that? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like, even like my dad, my dad, very big on like, nah, he don't bring nothing up unless I bring it up. And I'll be quick. I'm comfortable with my family. I'll be quick to have like, but you also know who you can and cannot have certain conversations with. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I feel like, um, like over time, obviously they're going to be more comfortable with it. And like your mom maybe won't like roll her eyes at like your rainbow wristband and things like that but I feel like when it comes to topics like this it's so hard because you really who are we to say things are gonna get better we don't know her family yeah and like there really be some really stubborn people out here who like they'll die on that hill with the I don't like LGBTQ blah 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 blah. you know like it's like that goes against my beliefs and my religion so like I don't that's that's tough I don't know. Like you said, you still trying to do you while, you know, being respectful or whatever to your mother. That's all that I could do. Like, that's what I did. I didn't do things in front of her face. I didn't like, you know, I just gave her her space, gave her her respect, respected her when she was around. And I still did me. Like, I was still doing gay things. Like, yeah. I didn't care. Um, not that I didn't care, but it was just like... I. I have to live my life. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I just have to hope and pray that you love me in the way you say you do. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Um, so I think that you're doing the best that you could do. And that's, you know, be respectful while also doing you and being your the person that you feel is, yeah, you know, who you want to be. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll get better over time. Yeah. Um, all right. <clears throat> Do you have lesbian friends that don't want kids? As a child free lesbian, I feel bombarded with breeders, even in the LGBTQ community. I often don't even want to start friendships with people that are interested in having kids, which leaves me only with the child free straight friends, which also makes the dating pool even more scarce. Am I wrong for only dating befriending child free people? Honestly, that's the first time I've heard of that. And it's crazy because I actually, I'm lying. I heard somebody on TikTok say that, you know, something about the whole, your friends having kids and like mm-hmm. you not wanting to have kids. And somebody mentioned how that was selfish. But oh, it was selfish. Like it was selfish to, I don't know. I forget what the TikTok was, but it was, it was misconstrued. People like twisted what the girl was saying, uh-huh. but still, um, They were saying like, you know, you being a person who doesn't have children or doesn't want children, Mm -hmm. you're like flashing this light, this life in front of your friends that have kids that can't have that life. Some something uh, uh, along that line. Oh Lord. But it's always it's always something. But they know what it was like before having kids. Yeah. So if that was your preference, you know, if that's the type of friend you don't want, then that's the type of friend you don't want. 
But all in all, at least for me, like if I'm cool with somebody, I'm cool with somebody. Like, I don't know. Like if, if you're somebody that I've created a bond with that, you know, I vibe with and I respect and that supports me and you know I, who am I to be like I don't want to be your friend because you have kids like just because that person had a kid doesn't make them like I don't know I yeah. don't know how to say it but I mean we both have friends who have kids mm-hmm. um but I definitely get where they're coming from because it's like they don't know like it's like it's hard to relate sometimes with someone who has a kid because they have a whole kid, like their whole life is dedicated now to another human. Like they're waking up in the the middle of the night. They're waking up early. Like they're busy, Mm -hmm. truly. They can't go party like that because they have to, they have to take care of their child and they don't have a babysitter. They don't have like all the resources that most people do have. I feel like, um, that not that most people do have because can't talk for everyone but I feel like, like there could be a disconnect yeah between, between the two but they just don't have the time like they truly just don't have the time but at the same time i have friends who have kids who make time mm. like my friend who just had a baby we've gone out like twice already and gone drinking and shit and like she's yeah, still but, a good time but it's also you make the effort too like it doesn't always have to be a oh yeah we go out it's like i'm gonna come through it's like the baby there i want to see mm-hmm. the baby oh let me help you with the baby or like mm-hmm. let's have like a let me be a part of your yeah. little. all right finish up but yeah um do you think they're wrong for dating or befriending people who don't who don't want kids everybody's entitled to their preference mm-hmm. but i'm a person who always thinks about if the shoe was on the other foot, if that was me, would it be an issue with me that people didn't want to be friends with me because I had kids? I don't know. Everybody's different. It's totally your preference, but I don't think it should make a difference. You're not wrong for it. It's your preference. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It is what it is, but. Yeah. But I feel like as you get older, if you like continue with this, then you might like only have like one or two friends. Because most people have kids. Yeah. Even the gays. Yeah. They figure it out. They figure yeah, out. Yeah, eventually people kids. won't have kids. I don't know. Or if like it's eventually your... people get to an age where they're like, I'm too old to be getting an abortion. <laughs> so like, I'm just going to have the baby. Mm. So even your straight people could surprise you, the people who said they didn't want kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just never know. Which I feel like that part is really crazy to me because that's where it mostly happens. I don't feel like. I mean, I think that gay people are having kids now because they can and there are options to mm-hmm. have them, you know, um, but it'd be the straight friends who really just be popping them out. Duh. So because they can. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But if that's your preference, that's your preference. That's what you want to do. If that's, you know, what satisfies you and and um, the life that you're living, then by all means, do what you do. But, you know, teach its own. Everybody's different. Yeah. That's, that's it for it. this episode, y'all. That's it. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Deuce, deuce, mother goose. Bye.